Have you ever seen pictures that are taken half on the water and half outside? Like you literally see the surface of the water in the middle of the pictures. Usually these pictures are taken with a GoPro or you can take it with the DSLR as well. But you have to get one of those waterproof camera case, which there are actually two downside of it. One is that it is quite expensive. If you want to get the cheaper one, then there's no guarantee that the water won't leak. So better get the expensive one. And the second downside of it is that you are limited by the camera size and the lens size. So usually when you buy the case, it is meant for specific camera models. So if you buy the one for a7S II, then you can only use it for a7S II. Also for the lens, you are limited by the lens size because you know if it comes this, that size, then you can only use lens that can fit in that size. So, but today I'm gonna teach you guys how to take these kind of underwater picture, specifically the ones that are half underwater, half outside where you can see the surface of the water, but in a much cheaper price. And also you're not limited by the camera size or the lens size. Now, the first thing you need, also the most important thing you need is a cube made of transparent acrylic. So this acrylic is sealed on all of the side and there's one opening from the top, which is where you're gonna put the camera inside. So you're not gonna get this cube made of glasses because actually that's quite dangerous if you break it during shooting. But you gotta be very, very careful with acrylics because it can be scratched very easily during shooting. So if you're wondering where you can get these type of uh, transparent acrylic cubes, I found it at the stationery store near my home. They can actually customize it for you. You can tell them whatever size you want it to be and also the thickness of the acrylic. So there's a few notes on the thickness of the acrylic. When you get to the stationery store, they can show you a few samples of how thick it can be. So you bring your camera and whatever sample you get, put your camera lens against the acrylic and see if you can see through the acrylic very clearly. If it's like too foggy or too blurry, that means that it might be too thick or something. So get it like close to where you can see everything, but you cannot get it too thin as well because if it's too thin, it can break very, very easily. And also when you're putting it underwater, it will receive the pressure from water and it can might bend and might even break very easily. So be careful with that. So basically you should just try to get the acrylic as thick as possible, but also when you put the lens against it, you still can see it very clearly. Make sure to tell them when they're making the cube that it has to be empty on one side. Otherwise you cannot put the camera inside. And also the corners has to be completely sealed. Otherwise water might flow in uh, through the gaps. Now for the camera, it is better to have a flip screen because you're basically shooting it from above. If you don't have a flip screen, just try to get the mirror and see if you can reflect the screen and see it from the top. Now, when you're ready with the cube and the camera, go to a river nearby or the ocean. If you don't have any of these, then fill your bathtub with water and put the camera inside the cube. Make sure the lens is against the wall of the cube so you don't get any extra reflection and that the image is clear. Now to shoot it, hold the cube from the top, you know, hold the edge of the wall of the cube from the top and start pushing it in to the water. You're gonna feel some resistance, obviously because there's air inside the cube. When you're shooting it, you can actually dolly it from left to right and you'll realize it's actually quite smooth because of the resistance from the water. If you're shooting at the riverside, make sure you're very, very careful where you stand because it can be very, very slippery sometimes. And I actually fell down on my back and it's still hurting right now, so be careful. So we were at the mountains doing these shots. We actually needed shots that are very, very fast and these water splashing and with shallow depth of field. That's what we got, but there's a lot of way to do it. You can play with different frame rates, different focal length, different aperture, and it's actually pretty fun doing it. That's about it with the video. We really had a lot of fun trying these shots and although I did injure my back, I hope it's worth it. We'll see about that. And you guys should definitely try it out. I'll see you guys next time.